the immune system is so complex that the number of potential permutations and combinations that might occur from placing a particular compound in the immune system is a number so large that it is possibly larger than the number of atoms in the entire known universe. The only option that researchers have is to use a proxy. And the only model is the closest living proxy to the human, which is the non-human primate. I met Owen pretty much straight away after starting university and we talked about coming to this part of the world. Lots of discussions on what we were going to do together here. So I still had to find my way. And that's when I discovered the extreme importance of monkeys in biomedical research. So then we started talking, ooh, okay, there's monkeys in Mauritius from a, from a biodiversity, from an ecological point of view. At the time, they were being, they were being shot because um, people didn't want them invading their sugarcane fields and conservation bodies wanted them out of the areas that had already been earmarked for ecological reasons. So we thought, ooh, okay, what if we turn this pest into a resource for humanity? So we came here in December 83 and submitted our project to the government. The company's early years, like I think many startups, were very difficult. Conventional banks in the early days were very wary about this business idea. It was completely new to them and there was a reluctance to support us financially. It was really bare bones and um, no, no theory to, to base ourselves on. We just had to go with our gut feel and start with you know a few people around us and that's, that's what made things possible, the, the, the people around us since the very beginning. Despite the fact that we know we're going to be using this animal, we have to be responsible enough to take care of them once they are under custody, because you know, we're not dealing with inanimate objects. It's life, it's a sentient being. So we're talking about the Sinomogus monkeys here. So this is a monkey that's not endemic to this island. It was brought like 500 years ago by the Dutch travelers who uh, brought it from Southeast Asia. And uh, so these evolved in isolation on the island, they reproduced and they're now the whole population is virus free. So that's why this monkey is important, the Mauritian monkey. And also Mauritian monkeys uh, is seen as the gold standard in terms of health, because when you are, you are in research, you would want to do research on healthy monkeys, healthy physically and also mentally, psychologically healthy, because the results will depend on that. So how do we go about uh, determining what's best for the animal, right? So yeah, this is something that I think is unique, if I may say, to our group here. We've always been challenging whatever we've been doing by having a culture of care, you know? A culture of care whereby you can have anybody come in and tell you, hey, you know what, Sam? What if we do that this way for the animal? So which means like it doesn't, it's not the bosses telling people how to do, is the whole team and like embracing this philosophy and coming forward. So that's the culture of game. We're constantly on the lookout to better things, okay? So this is not just me in the, vet, in, in the veterinary department. There's a whole lot of, of, of other departments who are involved in this. So this is something that's the culture here. As a vet, I feel proud and honored because uh, this is a noble cause. And of, of course, and uh, the long answer, the philosophical one is we won't be here, me and you talking. Uh, as a species if our ancestors didn't use animals through, to get through their lives. This animal, it's on the site too, meaning that the trade is highly regulated by the CITES office. The regulation means that they have to give permits, you have to submit a list of animals you're exporting, they have to come and cross-check, you have to provide all sorts of justifications if you want. Our way of working with the government is that we always have an open door policy. Transparency all along the way. We started very small, group of four or five people, and today we've grown to hundreds of people. But we still maintain this close family relationship. 
and our founders, our, our management has always put lots of emphasis, not just on the welfare of the animals. We care for the life of the animals, we care for the life of the people in our community, but foremost, we care for the lives of the people that work for us. Like we provide, provide them with the best way to perform their job in terms of training, in terms of personal development, in terms of amenities, but also we help them within their family to better their lives. Nous sommes en Arabe, nous sommes là, nous supervisons ici. Nous travaillons là depuis 1986. Alors, qu'est-ce qui est en ce moment-là Nous avons plusieurs départements ici. Nous travaillons comme une équipe bien soudée, une famille plutôt, la famille bioculturelle. Donc, nous comptons tous les départements qu'il y a parce qu'il y a besoin de tout pour, 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 pour nous arriver au bout de nos missions. Nous développons beaucoup ici personnellement. On vit ici, on apprend à parler à l'environnement. Valère, la vie et Valère, comment vous rester dans la société Comment vous dire Il y a une école plutôt ici, il y a une université plutôt ici. Et nous, nous pas payer pour dire, pas juste docteur, c'est nous qui nous sauve la vie du monde. We said, okay, we're going to commit to have a three-pronged approach: animal welfare, the people welfare and looking after the environment. These are things that we value as individuals and they've become part of our corporate DNA, if you like. Mauritius has only, sadly, 2% of its original forest left. And that 2% is in trouble, not because it's been cleared anymore, but because of invasive alien species. So what we have done is we have acquired areas of high biodiversity value in Mauritius, both on the east coast, the west coast, and in the north areas of native forest that were highly threatened now. They were highly threatened because of invasive alien species. We've set up teams there to weed the forest, to plant the native plants back in gaps in the forest. And then also we're working with government to reintroduce critically endangered bird species, reptile species, and even snail species back into those forests where they have gone. To restore the environment, you need money. You can't always get money from funders. You can't always get money from government. If you've got a business that's making profits, then you can plough those profits back into conservation. And that's absolutely our vision. That's exactly what we want to do. So without the business, you wouldn't have the funds to do it, even if you had the idea, even if you had the willingness to do so. You need money to do it. And we have been very strong in putting important amounts of our profits back into conservation, be it in Mauritius, be it on the island of Rodrigues within the Republic of Mauritius, or be it in Madagascar. We often like to talk about the breakthroughs that we've been involved in. And we play a very important role as a supplier to our clients, who are the ones conducting the research. Um, we've just been through one of the most surreal parts of modern history, which is the pandemic that happened in 2020. And we are very proud to say that we played an important role in supplying the non-human primates that we used to develop the two main uh, vaccines. Over and above that, we're very proud to say that our customers are involved at the cutting edge of uh, research on neurodegenerative diseases, cutting edge of research on novel vaccines to tackle future infectious disease outbreaks, but also cancer research. And cancer research is quite personal to me because cancer has been a, a part of my family medical history. We anticipate over the coming years a lot of progress. The progress is not going to be a breakthrough from one day to the next. It's going to be iterative progress, um, baby steps, as we like to say. But progressively, over the next decade, I have um, great hope that our customers, and by extension us, will have played a role in making immense strides to addressing these scourges. Despite uh, being this company, the small company that started 40 years back, the company has had an outsized impact on the current state of global health and also the future of global health. That itself is very exciting. We have uh, tried to focus on going up the value chain, doing the vertical integration within our businesses to make sure that our customers are best served. Now imagine being in Mauritius, small island in the, in the middle of Indian Ocean and making that much impact at a global level. 
But the world of medicine is advancing very fast. And bioculture has always prided itself in making sure that we learn, we partner, and, and we focus on, on the things that matter the most. Now, as we look into the future, uh, genetic medicine is going to be extremely important. AI and data are going to play an even bigger role. Bioculture is either focusing on these today or plans to focus on them extremely soon. We need to face facts. We can't be hypocritical in life. Everybody who has his kid vaccinated, who takes any medication, who is subject to surgical treatment, whatever, we cannot ever forget the contribution of animals and more specifically monkeys to bring all those possibilities to humankind. This is our obligation, if you want. We need to give this animal the best welfare. And of course, there's going to be pain involved for us all. But you give it the best life it can, and you, you say thank you to it. Thank you to this monkey for everything it's bringing to mankind.